What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and today I'm going to be comparing every single iPod Touch ever made, starting from the first generation and working my way up to the sixth generation iPod Touch. I'm going to be comparing speed, just usability, and overall, this video is more for amusement because it's interesting to see how far we've come. Now, the first iPod Touch was based off of the iPhone 2G. It was Apple's first revolutionary touchscreen media player. It ran incredibly slow, however, it was enough back in the day, and this was my first iPod Touch. It brings back so many fond memories. We used to call it iTouch even. Weird. Next came the second generation. It was a little bit thicker, seemed thinner because of the design, a little bit faster, better battery life, and it included a built-in speaker. This was actually one of my favorite iPod Touches as well. It worked very well except the mirror was still chrome and oh man, as you can see after years, this thing looks terrible. As Apple started focusing more heavily on building their app store supporting games, the iPod Touch third generation received a major speed boost. Not only that, the battery life went down as as a result, but it did a lot better in gaming. And then comes this beast, the iPod Touch 4th generation. It's got a new shell, retina display, the first iPod Touch that features a camera, and it's much faster. So this guy was widely popular, and it helped pave the way to the 5th generation iPod Touch. And finally, we arrive at the 5th and 6th generations. The 6th being the most recent, it's scary fast. It's got Apple's latest A8 chip. And just an interesting note, Apple shifted the headphone jack to the left after 4 generations, and they also swapped after 4 generations to the lighting connector. Now on the front, the power button was on the left side for three generations until three generations later, it was all on the right side. Interesting changes. So that leaves me with one question. How do these all compare? So I'm gonna run a few tests and at the end of this video, we're gonna have a good idea of how far we've come, how far we've progressed from the very beginning to where we are at now with the sixth generation. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I've got them all lined up from first to sixth generation and uh, looking at them, there's really not much difference from the front. It's the back, the casings that are different, and the internals that have mostly changed. So here they are on their latest firmwares. They've all been freshly restored. Let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so I've got them all connected to the very same power source. I'm going to flick the switch, and here they go. So the iPod Touch 6th generation did light up first. So it's important to note that all these devices are running different OSs. The newer the device, the more it has to load. There's a lot more features in the latest iOS 8 firmware than there is on iOS 3.1.3 on the very first one, but it's still very curious to see which one will boot up first, and there it goes. The iPod Touch 6th generation takes first place, then the iPod Touch 4th generation, 3rd, 1st, and now it's left between the 2nd and the 5th generation, and 2nd generation is 2nd to last, and the 5th generation is absolutely last. I mean, maybe Apple shouldn't have updated it to latest iOS 8. Maybe it would have been faster on the older firmware. And here I am loading one of the applications that takes the longest to load from the stock iOS, the app store. And it looks like the sixth generation is first and the fifth and it goes straight down the line. It honestly takes way too long to load all of it. So I'm just going to cut to when it loads and a third generation goes, then the second, then the fourth, and then the first generation. And using the app store on the first and second generations, I, I am honestly baffled. Were we just so used to things being so slow or was it faster back in the day? I just, I don't understand how we can tolerate how slow it was. It's like 20 minutes to download one application. But anyways, here's a benchmark score not available on the first and second generations. As you can see the numbers do go up slowly except for the fourth generation for some reason it really stayed the same and this is measuring gpu cpu pretty much a mix of everything next up just wanted to measure how long it takes to load one of my favorite games from back in the day we used to play these as a group of friends and oh man so many memories with this even though it was so uncomfortable cramped controls slow laggy but Call of Duty Zombies on iPod Touches was the best. Anyways, as you can see, it goes straight down the line. The GPU performance really is better every single generation. So starting from the first to the sixth, there is a steady progression. And for the last test, just wanted to load reddit.com, test the browser performance. Obviously, sixth generation takes first place, fifth. And I was surprised to find that in this test, it was a steady progression as well. So it went sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first generation. And any device below the fourth generation, it just baffles me how anyone could use these older devices to this day. It's just so slow. All right, so there you guys go. This kind of tests are always really interesting to see because with every generation, of course, there's improvements. But when we look back, and I mean really look back to the very first generation to where we're at now, it's hard to complain that there's not enough features or not enough speed. We are making steady progress, not only with iPods, but iPhones as well. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Leave me a like, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always posting new videos and have a great day. Enjoy your sixth generation or even first generation iPod Touch. Peace.